When you're driving the streets of Dubai, it seems like being on the set of a sci-fi movie. So it's easy to forget that you're actually in a place that can trace its foundation back through many centuries. The story began on the shores of Dubai Creek, and this week we joined Zahira for a trip back in time. This week, we joined Zahira to discover how a sleepy village on the Dubai Creek became the most popular city in the UAE. Contemporary Dubai inspires superlatives whenever it's described, and it's no exaggeration to call it the Manhattan of the Middle East. It offers an uber glamorous lifestyle, which I absolutely love, but that's not the most fascinating part of the city. Dubai's biggest attraction is the way it's reinvented itself. Thanks to creative leadership and out-of-the-box concepts, it's turned itself into a major business hub. That's got me thinking about what this city was like before the high-rise towers were built. I'm looking forward to sharing my process of discovery with you. The city is bisected by the Dubai Creek, which was the original port and home of the pearl fisheries. These water taxis called Abras locally are an inexpensive way to get across the creek. They cost about one dirham, which is about five rand. And if you're wanting to do this during rush hour, be prepared to queue. Thousands of commuters make the crossing on working days, preferring a boat trip to being stuck in traffic. In the early 1960s, the creek was Dubai's main link to international commerce. But with the development of air travel and the Jebel Ali port facility, it's now used mainly for tourism and regional trade. Thanks to this, the focus of development has moved elsewhere, leaving parts of old Dubai intact and unspoilt. I'm trying to imagine what this city would have looked like as a pearl diving and fishing village. But you can't simply Photoshop out the high-rise buildings and flyovers. I discovered this hidden gem on a blog and have invited the blogger to join me for breakfast. The cafe is located in the heart of the old city, in a district known as Bur Dubai. The view of the creek is just one of its attractions, with a variety of others to be found on its contemporary Middle Eastern menu. I started my morning really early today and I'm absolutely ravenous. I've taken the liberty of ordering a traditional breakfast for me and my guests and have opted for a beef tomate, which is an egg dish with a spicy tomato sauce and yogurt base and French toast, which I absolutely love, but with an Arabic twist of pomegranate syrup and hickory smoked date jam. I see Ashita arriving now and I can't wait to tuck in. Hi, Ashita. Hi. I read on your blog that this is a hidden gem and it's locked in an area that is just so unique from both architectural and experiential perspective. It's not only a restaurant but it also acts as a cultural and an exhibition space so you have a lot of workshops being held here. You will find a lot of black and white uh, photographs uh, taken by the British explorer uh, Wilfred Tessiger inside. This entire area is so important because this is where it all started with the creek and the Bastakia area and everything. And if you see the Al Fahidi fort, this was the fortified city. Breakfast has been delicious. With a busy day ahead, we have so much more to explore. A fire swept through the old town in 1894, and few buildings in the Dubai of today are older than 100 years. Being in this area feels like you've literally traveled back in time. This is the old Dubai. You see the wall of Dubai is still there. Look at the wind towers. This is the traditional architecture of Dubai. The wind would flow into the courtyard and into the room, so that's a kind of a natural air conditioning. This area seems alive with art revival. I think it's very interesting the way the modern Dubai residents are turning these old architectural houses into something that serves their purpose. That's the way it should be. I can't wait to go exploring myself today. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. The Heritage Village offers a window on the traditional Emirate lifestyle, while the architecture is typical of the early 20th century. In times past, construction incorporated coral, teak and palm wood, and sturdy walls enclosed the city's oldest landmark. The Al Fahidi Fort was built in 1799 and served as a residence of the local ruling family and a symbol of their power. Their descendants moved to more comfortable quarters and the fort served variously as a military base and a prison before becoming the Dubai Museum in 1971. Inside the courtyard, you'll find typical pearl fisher boats. The Dubai Museum certainly isn't the Louvre, but encapsulates over 7,000 years of history in a very digestible way. For me, it's a must-see when visiting the city. 
sheltered from the scorching sun, cool interior spaces house exhibits including weapons, costumes, jewellery and historic artefacts dating back some 1500 years. In addition to the main museum, there are further collections of historical interest housed in another former royal residence. The house of Sheikh Said bin Maktoum Al Maktoum is the prototype of a traditional courtyard house. It has two stories, four wind towers or barjils, and four wings. Since 1958, when it was last occupied, the house has been restored to be one of Dubai's oldest landmarks in the old city. Calligraphy is an art form that's highly prized in the Emirate. Arabic calligraphy has always been something that has intrigued me ever since I was a little girl in Madrasa. Called Khat al-Arabi in Arabic, it takes the form of writing and turns it into an art form. It's often used to present verses or phrases from the Holy Quran and today we're fortunate enough to see a few examples of this in an exhibition called Arabic calligraphy over time. Arabic calligraphy can basically be divided into the angular Kufic and the cursive Nashq styles and a wealth of sub-styles. With the spread of Islam, many regional styles also developed, each with its own local influence and visual charm, with calligraphers in Turkey, Persia and China, rivaling those of the Middle East and Africa. By now it was well after noon and Zahiro was feeling peckish. Walking around Bastakia, I was on the hunt for the perfect spot for lunch. I found this place, the Arabian Tea House. It offers the perfect example of old-school Emirati lifestyle, traditional dishes and over a hundred different types of tea. I'm about to put their rooibos to the test. The tea house was a study in Emirati quaint, with a sense of whimsy that suggested the Arabian Nights, channeled by Lewis Carroll. In terms of variety and flavour, it delivered everything Zahira was hoping for. Well, the rooibos has definitely passed the taste test. I found a little oasis away from the hustle and bustle and I've ordered some of my favourite traditional dishes, fatouche salad and falafels. I'm ready to tuck in and carry on with the rest of a busy day. Zahira couldn't afford to dawdle over lunch because she'd set aside the afternoon for old-style shopping in the souks, beginning with a quest for one of her favourite spices. The mix of aromas in the air was almost overpowering. But she spotted what she was looking for. Hi. Hi. I'm looking for the best saffron you have. Yeah, this is the best saffron. Smell? Wow. And how much does a good piece of saffron cost me? The good saffron is one gram, eight dirham. Eight dirham? Yeah, for one gram. Is that my price or is that yeah, your price? For your price. Yeah. Where does this piece of saffron come from? The best is from Iran. Well, I'm sold. I'm going to get some of the best saffron in Dubai. Thank you okay. very much. Welcome, welcome. It's okay. easy to see why Dubai is called the city of gold, especially when this souk alone houses some 250 retailers trading in the precious metal. The gold souk is still the crowning glory of old Dubai, and while the gold price might have risen, it's still a great place to get good value for money. It's a huge temptation, but there's no harm in window shopping. The authorities keep a very tight control over the quality of gold sold in Dubai, so you can rest assured that the merchandise is the real deal. Souk is the Arabic word that means marketplace, and the Dubai souks reflect Emirati culture and tradition. They bustle with buyers and sellers haggling over mutually acceptable prices for an incredibly eclectic variety of goods. It's easy then to understand why the modern Dubai is built on the foundation of trade and not oil. Dubai has reinvented itself over the centuries, with its original wealth coming from below the waters, and then newfound prosperity being pumped from beneath the sands. Its survival and success have stemmed from an ability to adapt. Over in New Dubai, you can just see the headlights of the traffic on the highways. But to me, it's far more romantic to glide through the waters of the creek aboard a dhow with the sense of spice and incense in the air. Sometimes it's good to slow things down to a pace of your beating heart. Zahira boarded one of a fleet of floating restaurants navigating the brightly lit waterfront, where the diners could settle down to a buffet laden with local cuisine. Throughout our journey through Old Town, we've tried and tested many of the local Arabic dishes. Tonight is no different. 
On board, there are some delicious meals, including one of my favorite Arabic salads, the tabbouleh. Whether you perceive Dubai as old or new, it's all a question of perspective. The skyline of New Dubai changes every day and is best viewed at a distance. If you get too close to the Burj Al Arab or Burj Khalifa, you're almost too close to appreciate its beauty. That's the difference with old Dubai. You can journey through the streets and take in every experience in detail. I hope you've enjoyed our journey along the creek this evening and I look forward to sharing more Dubai experiences with you soon. Ma salama.